few people left in the world today who can still crew a World War II tank. And one of the few places left where the skills of gunning and driving, loading and commanding are still taught is here at the Museum of the American GI. It's part of a program they call Adopt a Tank. Brent Mullins doesn't really need much of an introduction. He's been a supplier of military vehicle parts for longer than I can remember. He owns a highly impressive collection of World War II military vehicles, which, unlike many collectors, he shares with the public. The Museum of the American GI is a culmination of many years of work, uh, many years of restoring vehicles, and trying to figure out what you're going to do with these vehicles once you have them all restored. Well, you can keep them all in the warehouse and just like a, a stamp collection, open up the book and look at it every now and then. Or you could try and share it with the public and try and create something that's maybe bigger than yourself in the end. And that's what we're trying to do with the Museum of the American GI. And it really has um, come to fruition within the last couple of years. We've broke ground in our building and uh, we hope to have our building up by the end of the year. I think it's going to be something that uh, the public's going to enjoy and be, and be impressed with the uh, vehicles that we have and the fact that everything that we have is functional. That's what sets us apart from other museums. Uh, we have an annual open house where we bring all of our vehicles out for the public to enjoy, generally the third weekend in March of every year. And we just like to invite everyone to come out and see the vehicles and experience all of our American history. Among his other talents, um, Denny Hare is a member of the board of directors of the Museum of the American GI, and he's the man in charge of the Living History Program. So Denny, what I'm interested in is the Adopt-a-Tank program. Well, this is unique. It's probably the only one like it in the country. Uh, how many places can you go with this many tanks, for one thing, and so if you want to take them out in the field and you want the public to see them and see them run, you're going to have to man them. In order to man them, you're going to have to have a program that teaches and trains. So a lot of people would like to get into a World War tank and play in it. I mean, that's, that's just really too cool to think about. Mm -hmm. And so, it's usually a real expensive project because yeah. you got to go buy one. Yeah, so if you don't own one, yeah. this is the best shot. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, let's have an adopt-a-tank program. We'll let them come and literally adopt a tank, learn everything it is about that they need to learn, uh, take, get the safety factors down, we'll go through the training manuals and that they had, the TM and the FM manuals, and then we'll actually present it in a reenactment with them manning it in the uh, authentic uniforms and in the tanks, actually doing what a real tanker would have done in World War II. So this is an experience of a lifetime. And we wondered if it would take off, and we're having people that have even flown in from Chicago to be part of the school. So uh, it's something that, that we're finding appeals to a lot of people. The tanks are so restored magnificently, they're the, probably, to our thinking, the best in the world restored. Everything in them works, the radios, the guns, all of it. So when you sit down with an FM manual or TM manual and you go to, to, to do something in the tank, it works. So they have the actual experience of being in a working, functional World War II tank, regardless of which one, and there's several to pick from, and they're all different. How many students have you got in this class? There's about 30, uh, with, the, with the ones that came back and the new ones that come this time. And when you have 10 to 12 vehicles you man, and you put an average of five to a vehicle, uh, we're a little short. Yeah. Um, the school runs for three days, right? Well, actually, it's, we, we have it set up for three weekends on a Saturday uh, and a fourth one if we need to, to, to get mm -hmm. the fourth one in. And then the graduation is the reenactment on the 17th of uh, March when we have the open house of the museum. So you're actually teaching everything that the Army took, as I recall, eight weeks to make a tanker. You're doing it in about three days. Yeah, but we're not doing it. In, they don't have to, to work on it. They don't have to live in it, and mm -hmm. um, they don't have to use live ammunition, and it's all under supervision. So, uh, yeah, we're doing it in three days, but we're not doing it the way the Army did it. Right. And they don't have to go on KP, and they don't have to police okay. the area all that much. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can see where you're saving a little time there. Yeah. All right.
Okay, that's great. Thank you much, Denny. All right, well, glad you could come, and then yeah. hope everybody will, will come to our adoptive tank program, see it, and come to our reenactment. All right, excellent. This is Sergeant Mike Mahoney, who's a senior tank instructor here at the Museum of the American GI. He's the man in charge of making tankers out of all these guys you see back here. Um, Mike, as I remember tank school, it took eight weeks. Yes. Um, you seem to be doing a fairly good job on it in about three days. <laughs> how, how, how does that happen? Well, uh, just concentrating on one particular item at a time per day. Uh, today is gunnery loading and unloading. And we're just putting everybody through a very fast, rigorous pace on uh, positions of the loader and the uh, gunner. When a person signs up for this school, what are they committing to? First of all, uh, committing to uh, help help the museum out on manning and operating these vehicles and also preserving, taking care of the vehicles by keeping them clean on the inside and out where they are factory conditioned. That's what they're committing themselves to and also preserving the history in front of uh, spectators and the uh, museum's uh, visitors. It's um, a pretty hard thing today to to learn how to drive and to learn how to crew a World War II tank. There are not many places left where it happens. This is probably one of the few. Is it the only one? Uh, as far as I am aware of, yes, it is mm -hmm. the, only, the, only one. the only one in the world, uh, museum, at least museum status, uh, that is offering a World War II tank school. And yours are the, by far the most totally operational, I think, yes. that you'll find anywhere. Yes. Who's your, who's your average student? Who's my, uh, historians. Just Design. plain historians, a uh, few armor model builders, uh, but mainly just historians. Just people who like history. Yes. Um, anything else you'd like to, to say about what you're doing in the program? And it's just a fantastic program ever since I was uh, brought attention uh, to it. Uh, I was said, I was asked, hey, you want to drive a tank? And okay. And <laughs> yeah, nobody ever turns that down. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, and, you know and, yeah. Yourself, uh, you know, myself, like you, uh, ex-military, ex-tanker, ex uh, you know, 48s and 60s uh, yeah. was one thing, and a Sherman tank, uh, you, no, I'm not going to say no to that. And, yeah, we, uh, we, we can figure those out. Yes, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, next thing I know, uh, I was being made uh, senior instructor here for the museum, uh, which is a, uh, a privilege and an honor uh, to be part of all of this, you know, to help preserve these and to show them to the public on how they actually looked and sounded back then. Because as you know, in other museums, you just see them sitting still. Here, right. you get to hear them growl. And that's one of the things that Military Motor Pool is all about, is seeing them run, letting the viewers have this experience of getting some idea of what it's like to do exactly what you're teaching these guys to do. Right, and these, you know, in fact, uh, I've got one of my uh, personal crew members, uh, his grandfather was a tank crewman. He now knows personally what it's like inside of a Sherman tank because his grandfather was inside of a Sherman mm -hmm. tank and now he has a closer bond to his uh, grandfather. So. They do.